Hey teachers, are you looking for an easy way to put resources and information together for students and families, whether through your lessons or newsletters or a website or a portfolio? If so, Wakelet is the perfect solution. This free tool makes it so incredibly easy to create a collection of resources just for students. So come along with me in this video. I'm going to show you exactly how to use this tool and I'm gonna show you lots of examples for how it can be used for teaching. So when planning virtual lessons, it's easy for things to get sloppy. We have videos that we want to share with students and Google Drive resources we want to share with students and websites and all these different things. And sometimes it can be really hard to put them together in an organized way. The same thing can go for newsletter information or putting together portfolios. It can just be really hard to communicate information in an organized way when teaching remotely. So I love that Wakelet makes it so easy for us to do this. And the best thing about Wakelet is it is 100% free. A lot of the online tools that I share here on this channel, there's components of them that are free, but then you have to pay for some of the other things. This is completely free. So to get started, you're just going to go to wakelet.com and before I show you exactly how to use it, I thought I would show you some examples because when someone first told me about Wakelet, I had a hard time envisioning exactly what it was. So I wanna show you some examples so you can get an idea of all the different ways that you can use this, especially if you're teaching virtually. So the first example I wanna show you is actually one that I created, and this is a lesson that students would go through all about the planets. So I have a short introduction here, and then I have a pre-assessment. So basically students are gonna click on this Google forum, and I'm gonna be able to see how much do they already know about the planets. Then we get into the actual lesson itself. I've included two videos, a website. I've typed in a saying that they can use to remember the planets. Then I have linked to some worksheets and Google Slides that they're going to complete. And last, as a form of formative assessment, I have an escape room activity in Google Forums that they're going to complete to review what they have learned. So this is an example of a lesson that you can create inside of Wakelet. And one thing I wanna show you before I show you these other examples is the immersive reader tool. Now, if you've watched any of our Flipgrid videos here on this channel, you have seen this immersive reader tool before because it's literally the exact same one that's offered in Flipgrid and it is so incredibly helpful for ensuring that everything we create inside of Wakelet is accessible for all of our students. So as you can see, if you click play, our solar system is home to nine planets. It will read the passage to them. We can also play with the text size if we have students that are visually impaired. If we have dyslexic students, we can change the fonts. We can also change the coloring. If you click on the grammar options, let's say you're doing parts of speech with students, you can toggle these different buttons so that it will highlight the different parts of speech. And last but not least, we can change the reading preferences. So we can have it show just one line or a few lines, or if it's a longer passage, we can have it show everything at once. We can also choose to incorporate different languages. So let's do simplified Chinese. And now, oh, one other thing I wanna show you with reading preferences is if you toggle the picture dictionary on, uh, that can also be really helpful. You'll see if I click on this, this is the picture dictionary down here. It gives me a visual image that students can connect with the word. And then we can listen to the word read in both English and the language that we've clicked on. So here's Chinese. And this is just an incredibly helpful tool for students. So this is one example. I wanna show you another example here. These are virtual field trips that another teacher has put together. And basically students can scroll through here and they can take all different types of virtual field trips. They can visit museums, uh, virtual field trips pertaining to space and flight, landmarks and parks. But this is just a great way that she has gotten her students to get out exploring the world even though we're in this age of virtual learning and social distancing where students can't get out a whole lot. 
All right, so the next one I'm gonna show you is one where a teacher has literally created a website for her class using Wakelet. So you can see she's got all kinds of categories here. She is a virtual teacher and she's made it so easy for parents and teachers to find everything they need to know for the school year. She starts out with the beginning of the year and there's information about her. She's got the rules, the supply list, everything they need. Under e-learning, she's got the daily schedule. She's also archived all of her lessons so students can go back and review things from earlier in the year. I like these newsletters she's put together for each and every week. You can click on these and see an example. So when students scroll down, they can see the objectives for each subject for the week, and she's included resources to help them with the different skills that they're gonna be learning. In addition to all that information, she has basically got everything here. So here's homework. She has put together resources to help with reading, math, everything her students need for virtual learning can be found right here. So it's kind of like another form of a Google site or a class website. Now the last thing I wanna show you is you can also find templates here on Wakelet that you can use if you don't wanna start from scratch. Here's some newsletter templates that another teacher has created. So you would just copy this template fill in your information, and then that would save you a whole lot of time. And if you're wondering, well, how do I find these templates? Let me show you. I'm gonna go back to my dashboard right here. And whenever you wanna find something, there's two ways that you can go about doing it. You can click on showcase up here at the top of the page. This will show you just a general uh, board with all kinds of collections created by other people that they've decided to share with everybody else and you can use any of these. The other thing you can do if we go back to my dashboard is you can click on search and type in exactly what you're looking for. So if I want newsletter templates, I can type that there and then it's going to pull up what it has available. And you're gonna see there's all different kinds of newsletter templates that come up. So you can click on these, copy it like I said before, and then just fill in your information. So using those search and showcase tools is very helpful. Like I said, you can find templates or you can just go in through these things to get inspiration if you're looking for some ideas of what you can incorporate into your Wakelet collections. So as you can see, this application has so many uses. I find it to be extremely practical. In addition to some of the things that I showed you, you can also use it for student portfolios. You can create reading lists or video playlists. Um, I also find it a great way to list out the instructions for a STEM challenge and maybe embed a video that shows the students how to do the STEM challenge or a science experiment. But there are just so many ways that you can use this for teaching and learning. So now that the juices are flowing, you've got some ideas for how you can use it. I want to walk you through exactly how you can create your first collection on Wakelet. And I think you're going to be really excited because this is literally one of the easiest online tools that I've ever used. So let's jump on my laptop. I'll show you how to create your own collection and then how to share that collection with students. So I'm gonna walk you through how to create a new collection. And before I get started with that, I just wanna remind you that this is a very secure platform. If you click on the space settings here, you can see that my profile is not public because I have not toggled this button to on. If you see that green there, then that means that anybody can see it. And as long as you leave that off, it is going to be private for just you and the students and parents that you choose to share it with. So that's one great thing about this is it is very safe and secure for students and families to use. Now let's go ahead and get started with a new collection. I'm just going to click this plus sign and I am going to create a lesson about ecosystems. So the first thing I can do is add a cover image and you can either upload an image from your computer. I usually just choose one from the library because there's so many here. And this one's really cool with animals. So I could just go ahead and click this or I could search for one. And then once you have your cover image, you can decide if you want it a full cover image, half. If you don't want one at all, you can even hide it. The other thing you can do is if you want there to be a background image all over, we can click the settings. Sorry, I clicked on the cog up here and then add a background image. 
once again I'll choose from the library let's pick some trees because this is for ecosystems let's do something like this and there we've got that so now let's go ahead and give this a title this is going to be my ecosystems lesson I can give it a short description Okay, and now it's time to start adding the content, which is so easy to do. You're just gonna click this plus sign and you can either start by pasting in a link and clicking the plus sign. You can add text, you can upload an image, you can go to your, if you have something bookmarked, you can click on this and it can pull in something that you've already bookmarked. You can upload a PDF or you can upload something from any of these apps, Twitter, Flipgrid, YouTube, Google Drive, and OneDrive. And one thing I love this, you know we love Flipgrid on this channel, we have a whole series about it, but Wakelet is actually integrated with Flipgrid so you can upload your videos from Flipgrid inside of Wakelet. So I'm gonna start by just adding some text and if you want there to be a heading, just click H1. So let's put, let's get started. And this will be my introduction. And then let's say complete the following worksheets. And what I'm going to do is I am going to add in some worksheets here that students will complete before they start the lesson just to review what they've already learned about ecosystems. So I'm gonna hit the plus sign again. And I, if I had a PDF worksheet, I would just click on upload PDF, but I actually have interactive worksheets in my Google Drive. So I'm going to click here and I can search my Google Drive. I'm gonna type in ecosystems and ecosystems digital. These are my digital worksheets. And so it is just going to automatically pull this over from my Google Drive. And all of these digital worksheets are linked in my description if you would like to have access to those. Now, the text that I put in should come before the actual Google Worksheets because these are the instructions. So if I wanna move it, I can just click the arrows to move any part of this lesson up or down. So I'm gonna move that up. All right, so there's the introduction to my lesson. Now I'm gonna start adding in some content so that students can learn more. So let's add some more text and I'm going to put, let's learn, use the videos and websites to learn more about ecosystems. And now, I'm going to start adding in some videos and contents that students can review. Now, you'll notice there's plus signs before and after. So basically, you're just gonna click the plus sign where you want that content to go. And if you put it in the wrong place, it's okay. You can just use those arrows like I showed you to move things up and down. But since I want there to be a video after this Let's Learn, I'm gonna click the plus sign after it. And I'm gonna pull a video from YouTube so I'm gonna click the apps and then click on YouTube and you can actually search YouTube right here within Wakelet. So I'm going to look for an ecosystems video from Crash Course because they have some great science videos for kids. Let's do habitats. And then I'm gonna add in another video with the food webs. And I want the Habitat one to go first, so I'm gonna click the arrow to move that up. So there's some videos they can use to learn. The next thing I wanna add is a website that talks about some of these topics a little bit more. So I've actually already found a National Geographic for Kids article that pertains to the topic. So I am just going to paste that web address in right there, and then it will automatically pull that article up. So here's some content that I've added in so that students can learn. And next I wanna add in a little activity that they can complete as they are doing this lesson. So I'm going to add some text and I'm going to give them an activity that they can complete.
Okay, so I've just given the students an activity where they are going to draw a picture of a food chain and upload their work to Google Classroom. And I've actually linked Google Classroom. I added a hyperlink over the text so that students can just click and upload it directly inside of Google Classroom. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a review activity in here. So I've given some instructions and now I am going to link this to my ecosystems escape room which is in my Google Drive. It's a Google form activity and this escape room is actually linked in the description for this video if it's something that you would like to do with your students. But you can see here, now I've created a whole lesson for my students. I have a pre-activity with some worksheets they're going to fill out and Google Slides. I've got two videos, a website, and an activity that they're going to complete and upload to Google Classroom. And then I've got a review activity in Google Forms. So I have just, within a couple of minutes, created a whole lesson for my students to complete virtually. When you are finished and you're ready to share the collection with your students, you're gonna click done. And then if you look up here at the top, there's some different things that you can do. You can add emojis or reactions to this. You're gonna click on, the one that you're gonna want is the one with the arrow, which is the share icon. And what you're first going to want to do is you're going to want to change the visibility. It's automatically going to be set to private, which means that only you can view it. I recommend that you change it to unlisted. And what this means is only the people that you give the link to can view it. If it's public, anybody with the internet can view it. So I like unlisted and the best way to keep these settings straight is they're pretty much the same as what you're going to see in your Google Drive when you're creating resources that way. So I'm going to click unlist it and then you're going to see there's all kinds of ways that you can share this with your students. You can get a QR code that they can scan. You can share it through Google Classroom. You can share it through Teams. If you're using social media with your class, you can do it that way. You can copy this link and you can paste it in an email in Google Classroom. If you're using an LMS, you can paste it in there. Another really cool tool is you can also embed it. So if you have a website, a Google site, something like that that you're using with your class, some LMSs will even allow you to do this, you would just copy the embed code and then you're just gonna copy that HTML into your site and it will embed that content directly there. So that's how you are going to share a specific collection with your students. I also want to go back to my dashboard and let's say I want to share this whole page with my students. So I want them to have access to all of these science lessons on my page. I could just click on members and click invite members and I can copy the link and share it with them that way. I can also copy the code and if students go to wakelet.com, They'll see enter code right there on the home page. They can paste that code in and click join and it will allow them to see all of the collections that way. You can also type specific email addresses and it will send them an invite that way. So if you wanna share all of your collections with them, that's how you can do it. So Wakelet has really moved to the top of my list when it comes to online platforms and programs teachers should be using, especially if they're teaching virtually right now. It's so practical, it's so easy to use, it's 100% free, and I've also found it to be pretty secure and good at protecting teacher and student information. So I definitely recommend that you check this one out. And I'd love to hear from you. We've talked about so many of the different ways that you can use Wakelet when teaching. So leave a comment below and let me know if you've already been using Wakelet, how are you using it with your students and families, or if you haven't used it yet, how do you plan to use it or what do you think would be a good way to use it? Make sure to let me know in the comments below. And then when you're finished commenting, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I am uploading new videos every week and I don't want you to miss out on any of those. So until next time, happy teaching.